farm is hands down the best tower in Balloon Sea Battles 2, and it's also the most popular tower. But how do you use it? There's 15 different upgrades, and you're supposed to go for them in different orders. When you go for a banana research facility, when you go for a central market, how do you actually farm? In today's video, that will be answered. Now, this video will be split into three parts. The first part will be a game with farm on a hard map in an aggressive anti-stall setting. The second match will be how to play farm in a more passive, easy map. You're going to have a lot of farms. You're going to be going late game. And the third part will just be a lot of information about farm, how long it takes for farm upgrades to pay for themselves back, when you should go for a Bira versus Central Market, when you should go for Banana Plantation versus a Marketplace, all of that information. So without further ado, let's learn how to farm. All right, guys, our first match of the video of the farm guide will be on the map garden here. And we're going to be showing you how to farm in a match that is anti-stalled and going to be an aggressive game on a hard map. So Garden is the perfect one for this because this map gets anti-stalled a ton. So first things first, guys, with a strategy like this, you're going to want to make sure you get your hero on one because Jericho on one is very important. But you'll be seeing that I'm not actually going to go for that much eco like I normally do with farm this game. Because normally with farm, you'll see me going for like 2k eco, 1.5k eco, some pretty high numbers. But this game, that will not be happening. You'll see that. Also, we avoid, we made them um, not get their Jericho round one, which is pretty good there. But yeah, we're going to send some um, red balloons on round two. Well, actually, I probably should send greens. Normally, you want to send reds round two, but I'm going to send some greens round two just so that I can force their darling upgrade and force a couple of leaks. But if you're not going to be able to force upgrades or like leaks out of it, then send reds round two is a good um, eco send. I'll also talk about what eco you want to send with it because that's part of the farming. Ecoing is part of the equation there. But yeah, after I force the upgrade, now I'm just going to send reds. You want to send reds on round three here, and then you want to start saving up for your first farm. Start saving up for your first farm will be the plan of the day. And I got their Jericho late, which is good for me. Because that means they won't get their first steal till round five here. Round five will be when they get their first steal a Rooney. Will be when they get their first steal Rooney. And then round four, you want to send spaced pink balloons. You're gonna be wanting to send a lot of space balloons. Reds are basically like the only group balloon you want to send early game with farm strategies. Alright. Perfect, perfect. And now. We will get my farm down. They got their farm down as well. Alrighty. Let's target my Dartling downwards now. And let's steal from them. And we will send white balloons on round five here. They're also going to upgrade their Dartling, it looks like. They're not sending me white balloons. Can I greed for this? No, I can't. They're sending me white balloons now. They got their 0 2 2 Dartling. Nicely done. We'll get mine as well. Okay. Perfect, perfect. So now you're just going to want to keep sending these white balloons and go for your farm upgrades. You're going to be upgrading the top path of the farm here. Also, they're stealing from me. So if I can avoid any of the steal at all, it will be fantastic. I avoided a couple ticks of the steal, which is perfect. Now, guys, I'm going to show you an advanced farming technique right now, right here. So lots of the time, people are going to go for the greater production farm first. But a trick you can do sometimes is if you can afford this farm up this farm but right before the round starts it's actually more effective to just place down another farm and then upgrade them later because the reason you want to place another farm right before the round starts is you get a banana at the start of every round if you place it before the round starts so it's actually very effective if, because you get a pretty much immediate 40 dollars cash if you can place it right before the round starts also get my alchemist down perfect and now we're gonna we're sending black balloons by the way on round uh six and seven okay send me those we're gonna boost this should be good against these on boost and we will keep farming keep on farming send black balloons on these rounds you also can send white balloons instead if you want black balloons or white balloons doesn't make that much of a difference i just i kind of do a mix they've also stopped ecoing which is kind of weird yeah, they're stealing from me i want to avoid the steal if possible i feel like they're going to send me a rush here because they've stopped ecoing so i'm actually going to stop ecoing to play it safe so i can defend a rush No, no rush. Okay. We're going to keep Eco then. Faster barrel spin. Perfect. Perfect. All right. But yeah, with a strategy like this, you can't get that many farms early game because you need to afford your round 11 defense. So this is why I'm talking about like this is how you'd farm on a hard map where it's getting anti stalled a lot. And by anti stall, I mean the rounds are getting like really short because the balloons are getting popped early. Yeah, we're good against that. At least we forced them to rush me. 
And I do have a hot, I have a much higher equal than them because they have stopped equaling a long time ago. So that's another thing we got to learn for us. I have a much higher equal than them. I'm going to send spaced rainbows this round and I'm going to start saving up for my banana plantation. We've got plan here. Also, they're stealing from me. Let's try to avoid the steal. Perfect. So round 14 is a very, very short round. So you want to make sure you don't eco round 13 with farms so you can afford a good farm upgrade for round 14. Because round 14, you get a lot of farm income here. So I'm going to sell that. Get this up. Perfect. Now I need to be careful if they rush me. I can afford my Berserker Brew pretty easily. Let's get Laser Shock on this. Let's get Berserker Brew up. Yeah, we're good there. Sending me another rush. We'll get Berserker Brew Microed. We're good. All right, perfect, perfect. So yeah, as I said, I'm not gonna go for much eco this game because it's a hard map, but I'm gonna eco a little bit round 15, a little bit round 16 here. We'll steal from them as well. We'll go to like 750. 750 is a solid amount. 751, because I'm bad at getting numbers on the dot. And the reason why I'm not ecoing much, guys, is because this game most likely will end round 22. Because of our loadouts here, we don't really defend ZMGs that well. I'm going to eco a little bit here just to avoid their money steal. I'm placing down an alchemist to avoid their money steal. But yeah, I don't want to eco too much because eco doesn't have sell value in it, right? Eco is good if the game's going late, but the game's most likely not going late because we're both going to probably die to ZMGs. So if I put all my money into farms, farms have good sell value, which means they're going to be good over the duration of a match. My next farm here is also going to be a marketplace. And the reason why I'm going to go for a marketplace over a plantation is marketplaces have an, um, a 20% sell loss instead of a 30% sell loss. But, but plantations give you more money for the money you put in. So I went for a plantation first because I'm keeping the I got the plantation early, so I'm going to keep it up a longer time. But since I'm going to be rushing them around 22, I'm going to be selling this marketplace within like five rounds. So it's going to be better for me to keep the marketplace up. At the end of the video, I'm going to be going over like the specific math behind these upgrades and like when you want to go for a plantation versus marketplace. So just bear with me here. I'm kind of just showing the flow chart of farms right now for you guys in a um, anti-stalled hard match versus a long late game match with farms. So that's kind of that's kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, he's stealing from me here. I can't really avoid this steal, unfortunately. We kind of just got to let him let him do it. You know what I'm saying? We kind of just got to let him do it. I think I'm good here. All right, no, no boost needed. I honestly probably should have boosted that though in the grand scheme of things, just because I spent a lot of money there. But we're gonna go for a IMF loan. Because, again, the game's going to end round 22. So I want to make sure I have an IMF loan going into it. This guy's spending all of his money on these Moabs. We're going to boost this. I should get boost back in time and my IMF loan ability to defend a rerush pretty easily. Alright, we use that. Alright, perfect. And then now I'm going to have IMF loan money to defend whatever they send me. Perfect. And I don't think they're going to defend my ZMG here. IMF loan is a really good farm you can use in these hard matches because you're not going to have that much money, right? The game has been anti so There's a lot of rushes sent at one another. You guys are poor. You guys are poor, essentially. So using an IMF loan can kind of get rid of your poorness because now you get a free $20,000 out of nowhere to send rushes at your opponent and defend with. So that's why I kind of used it in this scenario. Also, we can send some purple balloons to... Oh, wait, no, he has a bottom dart thing. I'm not going to block their, tech, their um, transforming tonic. They're dead anyways. That doesn't defend. But I think that was a pretty good showcase of how to farm in an anti-stalled match. Using the IMF loan is very important. Making sure to build up marketplaces when you can. Um, he's sending me a rush here. I'm I should be able to just defend this pretty easily. 
Yeah, we actually shred that. All right, GG's. And next game is going to be a stalled farm match on a long map. All right, guys, our next match of the farm guide is going to be on an easier map here. So we're going to have a lot more farms. The game's going to go a little bit later. So that one was showing you kind of a hard map, a hard matchup. Lots of rushes sent. This is a less, this is a more passive game here. So with Bomb in particular, you want to send Blue Blue Nico round one and Green Blue Nico round two. But if you do not have Bomb, uh, I'd recommend sending Red Balloons, as I said in the previous match. But with Bomb, you kind of need to send these just so you can afford your early defense. It kind of varies a little bit with the strategy. But most of the time, in 90% of the cases, just send Red Balloons round one. This is just one of the cases where you do not want to do that. We're against Albatross here, by the way. We're starting with this Gwendolyn and a Boomerang. Okay, I see you. I see you. Upgrade this to Frag Bombs. But yeah, what you'll see I'm doing this game in comparison to the previous match is I'll be going for more eco. I'll be going for a second plantation instead of going for the marketplace because I'm not planning on ending the game round 22 like I was last time. And um, yeah, the game's also going to get stalled more, which means these rounds are going to get a lot longer. So it's going to be easier to afford our stuff. Plus the, map's just e plus the map overall is just a much easier map. So I should be able to afford more farms and stuff pretty, pretty easily here. All right, so now that we got my bomb upgrade up, we can send the red blue Nico like I'd want to. Um, they're using their Gwendolyn cocktail. They'll be good over there. Let's get my farmer down. Let's get my balloon bot down. We'll get our first farm down as soon as humanly possible. Let's we'll send pink balloons this round. You always want to send pink balloons in round four. They're better than reds. Mm. They're going to have to get their ricochet here soon. Yep, they got their ricochet. Nicely done. And then we will get my first farm down. Perfecto. All right, we're vibing, we're vibing against Mr. Albatross. So you do the same thing you did last time where you just get the increased production upgrades on your farm. You always, no matter what farm upgrade you're going for, you always want to go for these increased production upgrades first. You don't want to start with the middle cross path. You don't want to start with the bottom cross path. You always want to start with these two upgrades on your farm. This is the best way to do it here. Okay, send me green balloons. I don't have to upgrade my bomb against that. Now he's sending me whites. I do need to upgrade my bomb against this. I will leak a little bit here, um, which is fine because they don't do not have Jericho. So camo balloons are not really a worry for me early game. So I can afford leaking without having to worry about like camo leaks, which is nice here. All right, I got my bomb upgraded. We got my bomb upgraded here. Perfect. Now I could upgrade my greater production this round or I can do the farm tactic that I talked about last game where right before the round starts, I get this guy down. And it gives me a free $40 at the start of the round. Yep, that is how you want to do it. It's it's worth to do that sometimes if you can play if the timing works out where you get it pretty much right before the round starts. Because you always get that $40 right at the start of the round. So it's a pretty much instant return on investment. Now what I'm gonna do, since I don't really need to save up for an expensive hydro rocket pods round 11 like I did last game, I can actually go for a plantation early, which is gonna be really nice. So I think. We'll go for two greater production farms first because the greater production upgrades are just really cheap. And then I'll start saving up for my plantation. And then I'll start saving up my plantation. Also doing the same exact eco I did last game with the black balloons. You could send white balloons if you want to. Black balloons or white balloons are both very um, valid eco sources with farm here. All right, we'll steal some money from them. And we'll still continue saving up for my banana plantation. Okay, they're sending me zebras. They're sending me region zebras. Let's get this up to a frag bombs all right that was all they sent so i should be good there yep we're good we're good continue ecoing most of the time on these hard maps i mean not hard maps on these easy maps i don't want to keep my finger off the eco button for basically the majority of the game you always want to be ecoing because eco is very valuable when the game's going later all right hopefully my phone doesn't die to ai all right We'll still, we're going with red balloons on this round. We got my plantation up, which is per perfect. We're going to get a submarine on this round because we need our camo detection. You also get your plantation with the middle cross path, guys. The middle cross path is what you want on your plantation there. All right, we're good. We'll send space rainbows this round. Now, one round I do recommend stop ecoing on with farm, though. Out of all the rounds, the one round you do definitely want to stop ecoing is round 13. And the reason is... Um, you lose the space rainbow send, which is really good. So you can't really send that a very efficient eco anymore, but you want to save up for round 14 because round 14, as I said before, is a very, very quick round. So you want to make sure you build up as many farms as possible for round 14. And then after you get your farm upgrade up, you go back to eco. Also, he is sending me a rush. 
I need to boost this. It's fine. I didn't have money on hand for that at the start. And now you go back to Eco. And if he sends me a rerush, I can get up a bomb in the back. This should, this should be on strong as well. No, he's not rerushing me. Yeah. So now after you get your double plant up, you want to send Black Balloon Eco. Now, why am I sending Black Balloon Eco? Um, it is the most efficient Eco Balloon on this round tied with greens, yellows, and whites. But it's also the fastest of the group. So it's better. It's the most efficient. And it's the fastest of the most efficient balloons. So you want some Black Balloon Eco here. If you start to save up a little bit money on the side, you can mix in a couple pinks, which is what I like to do sometimes. Also, please don't die. My opponent dies here. Okay. You can mix in a little bit of pinks on the side if you start to save up some money. But also, saving up a little bit of money on hand is not always a bad thing. Because you'll need that money in case your opponent rushes you. Like, for round 17, for example, I need to be able to get up a Moab Mauler pretty easily. So I might actually have to hold my eco here for a second. Just so then, if he rushes me, I can easily get a Moab Mauler here. I can easily get a Mauler up. Is he rushing me? No, he's not rushing me. Okay, we'll go back to eco. We'll go back to eco in here. Go back to eco and all right they're gonna sub up i'm not gonna place another farm by the way um i will be going for a banana research facility will be my next plan of attack so we'll probably try to get this brf up before round 20 and the reason why you want to always try to get up before round 20 if possible is because round 20 is a really quick round only one moab comes out of the ai path so the round's basically like over like in an instant so you get a really fast um, return on investment on the farm upgrade if you can get a big farm before round 20. All right, we're going to steal from them again. So since, now if you're not going to get your BF before round 20, like say the game was more aggressive and you put a lot of money into your defense, you might not be able to afford your farm round 20. That's okay. Um, also, he's sending me these. So I actually don't think I can get my farm round 20. And because I don't think I can get my farm round 20 here, what I'm actually going to do is continue going. I was going to stop going to afford my farm round 20. For a little bit but since i can't afford my farm on 20 i'm actually gonna continue eco on is how you want to do it and we'll just go up for we'll just go for a marketplace then because there's no way i'm getting my beer off anymore after he rushed me like that there's no shot i'm gonna get my beer off anymore after the he rushed me so we're just gonna um take that we'll continue eco a little bit i'll probably continue ecoing until round 21 round 22 ish and then we will full stop we're aiming for around 24 monkey wall street so that's the why our eco is very helpful for us here, because round 24 in specific is a very long round. So getting a lot of eco with a farm strategy is very useful for you here, since you get um a lot of money from your eco on round 24, and that allows you to save up for a monkey Wall Street round 24. So we're gonna stop at 22.50 eco, and we'll get the central market. I'm not gonna go for the BRF anymore because I'm gonna be selling my farms for a monkey Wall Street round 24, and since Round 24 is only two rounds away. A BRF will not be worth. But a BRF would have probably been worth if I got it up around 20. But since I could not get up around 20, that is what's going on. All right. He's sending me those. We should have one mauler here and one ballistic, and I should be good. I'll go for one more marketplace. A marketplace is worth getting up, guys, if you keep it up for about one and a half rounds and then sell it. So since... I'm going to be selling it at the end of round 24. Am I good here? Holy cow, that almost killed me. I'm not even going to lie. That, that was actually kind of crazy how it almost killed me. There are so many ceramics there, or insides. But yeah, Marketplace takes about one and a half rounds to pay for itself back. So since I built this up mid-round 22, this guy is making me income. Half of round 22. The entirety of round 23 and the entirety of round 24 so that's two and a half rounds so it will easily make its money back here marketplace will easily make its money back an easy way to know if your marketplace has made its money back guys is an easy way to know if your marketplace has made its money back guys is if it's made more than a thousand seventy dollars because that's how much you lose by selling it so i've made about 1500 so far almost 1500 from it so it's easily made more than I've invested into it. We're going to sell all these now for my uh, Monkey Wall Street, as I said. Round 24 Monkey Wall Street, as I was planning. Now, after you get your Monkey Wall Street up, I'm going to go straight for a Banana Research Facility. Because we'll be eyeing a um, Banana Central next. So, you want to get your Bira first for that guy? Get your Bira first here. Perfect. We're going to keep placing some molars down. In case they send me DTs. I doubt they will, but if they do, I just need to be ready for it. Ready, sped, spaghetti, Freddy. You know what I'm saying? 
And then after we get our bananas, research facility, we're going to go for a central market. Now, the reason I'm going for a central market is because central markets only take about a little more than one round to pay for itself back. And I won't be able to get this banana central till probably around 28 or so. And since it's round 26, I'm going to be keeping these guys up for about two rounds, which means they're going to definitely profit for me. Because I'll be just selling them on round like 28 to get my banana central up. So they will definitely profit for me by then. So it is a worthwhile investment. I probably shouldn't have built up that many molars, but we're good. It's definitely a worthwhile investment to get these guys up and then sell them for banana central on round 28 here. Now, bear in mind that I haven't really sent in my opponent any rushes this game. Um, I've done that intentionally because one, I need this game to go late so that I can show you the entire farming path. But two, the game, your farming and ecoing might be a little bit less. Like, if you're, you sent your opponent some rushes and they sent you a lot of rushes, don't go for 2.25k eco. If, go for like 2k eco, go for like 1.6k eco, so then you can still afford your round 24 monkey wall street. Because getting that round 24 monkey wall street is very important here. But since I didn't send my opponent really any rushes, I could have went, I went for a lot of eco and still could afford it. Also, we can get this guy up now. Round 28, as I said before. And now after you get your banana central up, you always want to go for BRFs because now your BRFs are buffed by 20% extra income from your banana central. So that's actually very, very helpful there. The extra income is very, very nice. It is very, very nice there. We'll go for one more of these. I want to see if I can defend whatever the rush they send me. So I'm going to play defensively here. I'm not going to send them round 30. I'll see if I can get a cool defend for you guys in this video. Is he going to rush me? Really? I was just preparing for an instant rush, but they didn't rush me. All right, we're going to send them. We're going to send them then. We'll send them, because there's no way they're defending. I thought he was going to rush me. He's giving me the mad emoji. Okay, what's he sending me? He balloon boosted at me. Oh, there, there, there it is. There it is. Oh, I got up a preemptive by accident. Okay, we defend. We need to get up my balloon crush here. We're good, we're good. They actually might defend mine as well, so well done there. We're gonna send them one more. And that should be a GG. We'll get up some stuff in the back just to play it safe, but yeah, that's not going to do anything to me. Oh, he's sending me a normal BAD. Okay, well, we'll defend this one as well. Let's put... Wait, let's see if our bombs actually can defend this. I'm actually curious. How much damage do these bombs just have by himself? I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to use the abilities on them. I just want to see if like the Moab Molars themselves can actually defend the BD. We'll boost it. How much damage do these bombs do? Um, not much, I'll be honest. They're, they're kind of disappointing me a little bit. Okay, we'll use the abilities. Alright, we're good there. GG. GG, 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 GG. All right, guys, we're on the third and final part of the farm guide, and this is going to give you a lot of facts about farms, when you should go for a BRF, when you should go for a central market, marketplace versus plantation, and how long you need to keep them up to get a selling profit. So here we go. Here's a bunch of information about the top path farm. As you can see here, there's a lot of stuff like the cost of the farm, the income per round, amount of rounds to pay back, and the amount of rounds for selling profit. Now, the amount of rounds to pay back basically is the amount of rounds it takes for the income to make up the cost. So... For example, a 000 farm, an unupgraded farm, it makes you $120 per round and it costs $1,000. So if you were just to keep it up, it would take it 8.33 rounds to make back the cost. But you can sell farms. That's the strength of farms. So if you were to sell the farm, you only need to keep it up for two and a half rounds and then you can sell it and make money. Now, this information is really important when you go to stuff like the plantation, which is often used. 
where the plantation, you only need to keep it up for 2.1 rounds. So basically, if you keep a plantation up for two rounds and you sell it, you're making a profit. It's pretty good. A BRF is 1.73 rounds. A um, Banana Central is 1.5 rounds. And a, and a and a BRF buffed by the Banana Central, guys, is 1.44 rounds. Surprisingly, the BRF buffed by the Banana Central is actually a stronger farm than the Banana Central. It makes you more money for the money put into it than a Banana Central does. So this is actually the... um most efficient farm out there the brf buff by the banana central now we're onto the bottom path farm though the bottom path the markets now the markets are actually really interesting guys because they make you a little bit less money for the money put into them but they only take a 20 percent sell loss instead of a 30 percent sell loss so you'll see here um for example from previously i talked about how it takes two rounds for a plantation 2.1 rounds for a plantation to pay for itself back if you go for a 203 marketplace guys it's 1.49 rounds and then if you go for a um, central market, it's 1.27 rounds. And if you go for a monkey Wall Street, it literally only takes one round for monkey Wall Street to pay for itself back. And that's all because and that's all because of the extra sell value. But then if you look at the amount of rounds to pay back, if you don't sell it, these values are actually a lot worse because the value in the bottom path is the sell value, as I said before. Now we're going to get on to the part where it's like, OK, when do I go for plantation versus when do I go for a central market? So I've done a little bit of comparison for you guys for the plantation versus the marketplace. The plantation will give you more profit on sell after eight rounds than a marketplace, but this is not actually a fair comparison. And that's because a plantation costs more than a marketplace. And since it costs more, it should be giving you more money. So what I've done actually is I've price adjusted the values. And what I mean by that, if you look at the second table, I have I have adjusted these values by about 5% because the plantation costs about 5% more. And then after adjusting it, it actually takes 12 rounds for a plantation to outpace a marketplace on sell. Now, why do people go for a plantation then if it takes a 12 whole rounds for it to be better? Basically because a plantation is making you more money while it's up. And that money can be reinvested into more farms. It's only 12, it's only better after 12 rounds on sell. But during the time it's up, it's better as well. So so with this information in mind, my recommendation would be to go for a plantation if you're going to keep that farm up for more than six rounds. But if you're going to sell the farm in less than six rounds, go for a marketplace. So in an in-game scenario, this is kind of what it would look like. Say you're going to sell everything for a monkey Wall Street on round 24. You would go for plantations before round 18 and go for marketplaces after round 18 is a pretty good way to do it for plantation versus marketplace. Now we're going to compare BRF versus central market. Same thing works with the BRF versus central market. Just straight up, it takes four rounds for a BRF to be better than central market. But again, BRFs are actually much more expensive. So after price adjusting, it takes out six rounds for a BRF to be better, better than central market. But again, guys, BRF is creating you more money while it's up. So the it can allow you to um, reinvest the money sooner. So six rounds is not really good value to work with. So with BRF for central market, I would recommend if you're going to sell the farm within three to four rounds, go for the central market. But if you're going to keep it up longer than that, go for a BRF instead is my recommendation there. And lastly, guys, I always get this question of how much eco is a farm worth? Now, it's a really hard question to answer because farms, it, it varies how good they are, right? Because if the round is anti-stalled a lot, farms are better. If the round stalled a lot, farms are worse. And then there's some rounds that are really short, like round 14 and 20. And there's some rounds that are really long, like round 24, where farms are better on the short rounds and worse in the long rounds, right? But as a rule of thumb, the average round length between 1 and 30 is often about 24 seconds, which is four income boosts. So say a plantation makes you $800 per round, right? $800 per round, if you divide that by four, that's $200, which means a plantation is roughly worth 200 eco. So if you're ever curious on how much eco your farm is worth, figure out how much money your farm makes per round, divide it by four, and that's roughly how much eco it is worth. It's not a 100% calculation, because again, there's a lot of variables at stake, but it's a good rough estimator. Now, guys, I hope the video helped you in one way or another. If you have more questions, let, them, let me know in the comment section down below. And if it did help you guys, please put my code in the creator support tab. It would help me out a lot. It's just a way to support me. But thank you guys so much for watching. Ramalik out. Peace, lads.